Hey, welcome back to the How to Podcast series. It's Dave with you yet again. Enjoying a lovely cup of coffee. Thanks to you, the great listener. I appreciate you supporting the podcast through my Buy Me a Coffee link. If you want to refill my cup, I'd love to get a little bit more. Mine's getting a little cold. Do you drink the cold part of your coffee or what do you do? Do you dump it? Do you power through? Do you make it an iced coffee? There's opportunity, right? I'm not an iced coffee drinker. I like a nice hot cup of coffee. Oh, hey, what do you put in your coffee? That's an interesting question. Uh, for you coffee drinkers, uh, up here in Canada, we go to have a thing called Tim Hortons. It's a coffee shop. Tim Hortons is a was a hockey player, and he opened a coffee shop with a friend, and a lot, a lot, a lot. Of, and anyways, we have these coffee shops. They're like across the road from each other. Um, they're everywhere. And uh, it's pretty funny. You can go in, and when we order coffee in Canada, I know that it, our, my American friends order it possibly a little different than we do in Canada. If you want a two cream, two sugar coffee, you would order a double double. That's what we call them. Uh, and for me, I don't like sugar in my coffee. I'm not a sugar in my coffee guy. Uh, it's not a, as our, our American friends would call it, a soda. <laughs> uh, we would call it a pop. Here in Canada. See the fun we have with just a simple border between us. Anyways, uh, for me, sugar in a coffee feels more like a pop, aka so soda, than a coffee to me. So I avoid sugar in my coffee. I just have milk or cream, whatever I have. And putting a cold substance in a hot coffee turns your coffee, ready for this, cold. So my coffee goes cold quicker because I do that. So are you a, you just take it black. How do you take your coffee? I'd love to know how to podcast.ca. My speak pipe's there. Let me know. Come on. That has nothing to do with podcasting, but I just love to hear your voice. How do you take your coffee? Let me know. And if you have a buy me a coffee, let me know that as well. I'd love to send you a coffee that you can now enjoy yourself. So do that. Okay. I promise I'll send you a coffee. Give me your co buy me a coffee link over at howtopodcast.ca and tell me. What do you got in your coffee today? I'd love to know. Mine is still a little bit cold, but refreshing. Now, let's get on to a podcast, Dave. What about, what about that? This is not the How to how to Coffee podcast. This is the How to Podcast series, and I'm so happy you're here. I want to talk a little bit about the idea that us as podcasters, we the podcaster, uh, we are often looked to as a thought leader or an influencer. Which one is it, Dave? Which one am I? And how do I, how do I live with that title of being a thought leader, an influencer? What's the difference? And do I even want to be one of those? Now, a little story for you. I've been to New York City several times. I've gone down there to do some kind of work stuff to help an organization, a charity. And uh, I've been there. I love it. I just... To go into Manhattan, go downtown and walk the streets, you can tell who is a tourist from a native New York citizen because the tourists are walking with their eyes looking up, generally walking into the street, running into people because we're just mesmerized by the the height of these buildings and these places. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Right. You can tell. And that's... You, you can see the people who live there just kind of shaking their heads as they walk past you. And you're like, oh, <laughs> these people are not from New York, right? I'm walking here, right? Yeah, anyways. So when I went down there, I, for my first trip, obviously I was nose in the air, eyes to, to the heavens, looking at these buildings and just loving every second of it. I got to stand out of what at the time was David Letterman's studio, the Ed Sullivan Theater, and got my picture taken there. I'll put it up on my Instagram. You'll see a very skinny, um, <laughs> very uh, young version of Dave, if you want to see it on my Instagram. But to, to go there and just kind of walk and be there and be on the street, I loved it. I, I just love New York. So all my New York listeners down there in Manhattan and around the New York City area, I, I love you guys. You You have like the best city in the world. So you listening to me here in Canada, as I think of you, I just love the sounds and everything of New York. 
Now, one thing I tried the second time I went down with my friend is we we went and stood on the sidewalk and together we both looked up, up at a building and we started staring up and pointing. We were pointing at nothing, okay? Really, there was nothing going on. But the two of us just stood there and started pointing. Oh, did you see that? Look! Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And we're like pointing up at this imaginary non-existent thing. And guess what happened? People started to gather around us and they started looking up at nothing. <laughs> and they started pointing at nothing. And now this crowd got bigger. Like two people became four, became 10. We had like 15 people standing around pointing up at this building. Nothing was going on. But all of us were pointing and commenting on what we thought we saw and why the crowd was gathering, it kind of fed each other. And in that moment of pointing up and looking at what was really nothing, I realized that I had the power to be an influencer. I had the power to draw attention to something and gather a crowd simply by pointing up at nothing and people would follow what I was doing. And then to be able to step back out of the crowd, and now the crowd is their own crowd. They don't need my direction like they did in the beginning. They're carrying on the narrative of what might be happening, but wasn't happening. And I could stand back and listen to them make comments about what they saw, which, again, was not happening. And I was able to influence a crowd on the streets of New York by simply pointing up at a building and pretending something was happening. And then a crowd agreed with me. And then the crowd took, it on, took on its own personality and made up its own story. What a weird moment to be an influencer, to have the power to influence people to stop in their day, make note of something that they thought they saw and make that part of a conversation. I had the power to do that. And in podcasting, we have the power to make people stop in their tracks and go, wow, I've never seen that. I've never thought of that. I've never realized that. And we can do that through a podcast. You can do that. You can create a crowd. And instead of doing what I did and create a crowd around nothing, how about create a crowd around something? And that could be the topic of your podcast, your story, your book, your coaching, your business, your passion. You can create a crowd around something you love. And in that moment, you're influencing a crowd to take notice of you. You're listening to this podcast right now. No matter what you're doing in the moment while you're listening, I have your attention and we're on a journey together. So let's all look up to the tall building in front of us. And I'm going to point up to something that's not happening and let's see how many people gather around this episode of the How to Podcast series. Let's influence. And again, what's the difference between an influencer and a thought leader here on the How to Podcast series? Are you ready? Here we go. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. So part three in a new book that I'm reading by Sarah Losey called Open This Book, The Art of Storytelling for Aspiring Thought Leaders. Sarah does in part three, she talks about thought leadership. She breaks it down into understanding what thought leadership is, the no like trust process, what are you talking about, the avenues of thought leadership, and putting it into action. It's a great book, just recently came out. Sarah was on the podcast here on the How to Podcast series as my guest co host, and she's also on Living the Next Chapter, my author podcast. And Sarah and I go through this and talk about thought leadership. We talk about all of that side of what we do here as podcasters and as storytellers, speakers, all of that. And Sarah's got a great book. I'd love for you to go grab a copy of it. And it's a well-done book, really well done. I love that she has journal prompts and she's got spaces to make notes and she's asking you to write in this book and make it your own. So if you're looking at telling a good story and you want to know how to do that, simply called Open This Book, The Story, The Art of Storytelling, First Aspiring Thought Leaders by Sarah Losey. And again, it's a great book to have. Again, I just got it. So, Sarah, thank you. Great book. Holding it right now as I flip. Here it is, Sarah. 
there it is. That's the book. And again, she really gets into the whole thought leadership. And I love her thoughts and her comments around that. Go read the book. It's awesome. Links in the show notes, as always. And go check out Sarah over at favoritedaughtermedia.com. So here's a little clip for you from Sarah on this show, talking about her new book, Open This Book. And she helps us unpack the whole idea of an influencer versus a thought leader. Here's some of Sarah's thoughts. And for that whole episode, make sure you go check out her episode here on the podcast. But here's Sarah. I think the term influencer at this point has kind of a negative connotation. It's something that people don't really take very seriously. It's just when I think of an influencer, I think of an Instagram model or a TikTok model, someone who does makeup um, demos on TikTok and then they get um, affiliate money if they sell the products, things like that. That's what I think of when I think of an influencer. But the term influence really is about changing someone's behavior. And influencers aren't doing that in the way that a thought leader would, at least in the way that I see it. I think an influencer, they get you to stop scrolling and they get you to stop and pay attention to them because they are so cool and they are so pretty. And if I wear those sunglasses, I will look like them. I think the example I use in the book is a Marlboro man. And that example makes me laugh because he is my mom's ex-boyfriend. <laughs> I thought you read the book. <laughs> yes. Um, my mom dated a Marlboro man in like the seventies. Um, she gave me, per I had to get permission to include that in the book, but she did. But the Marlboro man, he got an entire generation hooked on cigarettes just because of how attractive he was. And that's ridiculous. And it, it's all like sex sells and how we we sell alcohol. All of these things that we sell is because of how attractive the people in the ads are. That's what I think of when I think of an influencer. They're people that just make you stop scrolling. A thought leader, they make you stop and think. They don't change your buying habits. They change your behavior. They change your perspective. They change the way that you see the world and the way that you act towards people or different groups or whatever it is. Thought leaders are presenting new ideas and new ways of thinking. They're not presenting new brands of sunglasses. And I think having the goal of, I just had a pop-up of a Facebook message saying, wait, your mom dated the Marlboro man. And I I think that my, my office is bugged, but I did say it on the last branded episode. <laughs> that timing, that was fantastic. Um, but yeah, I think, Thought leadership is just a much bigger goal. And thought leaders want to change. I don't want to say change the world, but we want to change our part of it. And it's about a lot more than just buy this product because I will get money. But buy my book and I will get money. <laughs> so thought leader versus pod versus influencer as a podcaster. Okay. The key difference between a thought leader and an influencer in the context of podcasting lies primarily in the focus and the approach of what you do as a podcaster. Thought leader podcasters aim to provide an in-depth knowledge of insights, expertise within a specific niche and to our friends in the U.S. niche or industry. The primary goal of a thought leader podcaster is to educate, inform, and drive meaningful discussions around an area of expertise, the topic and the why of the podcast. And the advantages of being a thought leader podcaster include establishing credibility and authority in that field, also fostering a loyal audience of engaged listeners seeking valuable knowledge, creating a platform for sharing original research, ideas, and perspectives. Again, keyword there is original. And the potential for monetization through maybe consulting, speaking engagements, writing a book like Sarah's done, or even sponsorships, having people come around you and go, we love your podcast and we want to help support you. So those are some of the advantages of being a thought leader podcaster, but there's also some things that are 
a disadvantage, potentially, depending on your situation. And they could include requiring a significant investment of time and effort to produce high-quality, well-researched content. Another disadvantage of being a thought leader podcaster could be the potentially narrower audience reach that you have compared to other influencers because you've niched niched down, niched down to the point where your audience is a little bit smaller than had you gone wide. And also it could be just the difficulty in maintaining a consistent content schedule due due to the depth of the preparation required to do your podcast. Again, as you narrow down and focus in, being a thought leader podcaster might make increased work for you as you prepare, but it's something that you can leverage potentially to grow your show. Now, the difference there, that's the thought leader podcaster, but what about the influencer podcaster? An influencer podcaster is different than the, than a thought leader podcaster because an influencer podcaster really focuses in on building a large and engaged following through personal person through their personality, their lifestyle, their relatability, and their primary goal is to entertain, inspire and influence their audience's opinions and behaviors. There's some advantages to being an influencer podcaster, and they could include a potentially broader audience than a thought leader podcaster. Uh, And you might have a higher engagement with a larger audience, potentially. There's also opportunities for sponsorships. Again, here as well, product placements and brand partnerships, which you can leverage to grow your show and grow your audience. Also, the ability to leverage their personal brand. And on the topic of brand, if you want to know more about branding yourself as a speaker, as a podcaster, or as a creator, check out Branded, the podcast with Sarah Losey, the author of the book I mentioned, and Larry Roberts, who also wrote a book. The two of them do a podcast together called Branded. It's really good. I've listened to every episode. Awesome. Link in the show notes if you want to check out Branded. But there's opportunities as a influencer podcaster to go after sponsorship, product placements, and brand partnerships. It's really, that's an opportunity for you. The ability to leverage that brand and connect with your audience on a more personal level is a potential for you as an influencer podcaster. So those are advantages, but what about disadvantages? Uh, Some disadvantages of being an influencer podcaster could include Difficulty in establishing credibility and authority in a specific field. Again, you're a little bit more broad focused. The potential for content to be perceived as superficial or lacking substance. Okay. And the reliance on maintaining a consistent personal brand and image. Those all fall under the influencer podcaster. So, As I look towards all this, I think for podcasters, it's essential for us to understand that there's a distinction between these two approaches and to align our content strategy, what we talk about and what we do in our show accordingly. If your goal of your podcast is to establish yourself as an authority in your field and share valuable knowledge, then consider positioning yourself more as a thought leader podcaster. However, if your strength lies more in connecting with your audience through your personality and your lifestyle, then maybe embracing more of the influencer approach may be more suitable for you in your podcast. Ultimately, the key to identify your unique strengths is to define your goals and consistently deliver content that resonates with your target audience and with you as the host. Whatever you path you choose, Remain authentic and engage with your listeners. That's a key point in all of this is when you write a book, it's hard to be engaged with your audience because they're reading your book and there's a separation. As a listener of a podcast, we have the opportunity to communicate together in this format and there's a there's a bridge there, which is a little easier to navigate. Remain authentic, engage with your listeners, and continuously strive to provide value through your podcast. And jumping back to Sarah's book around thought leadership, Sarah mentions on page 138, here you go, join me, 138, she says, she talks about the fact that 
influencers sell products and impact behavior because of their aesthetic. They cause you to stop scrolling. Thought leaders make you stop and listen. I love that, Sarah. That's great. Sarah also includes on page 141 a thought leadership self-assessment quiz. And you go through it and you get to score yourself on this and then you look at the results. And she she puts it all out there for you to understand thought leadership as it relates to you and what you do for your podcast, your speaking, your content creation. It's all there for you. And I'd love for you to go through there and try that. And definitely go check out the book. Open this book, The Art of Storytelling for Aspiring Thought Leaders by Sarah Losey. And I definitely have links again in the show notes for that. My question to you, do you consider yourself to be a thought leader podcaster? Is that who you are? Is that how, how you identify? Or are you more of an influencer podcaster? Is one better than the other? It's up to you. Is one more applicable to you and your audience? Maybe. So maybe that's something you need to think about and identify. Am I going more of the influencer model for my podcast or a thought leadership model? from my podcast. I'd love to hear your thoughts over at howtopodcast.ca. Again, I'm giving you some great resources with Branded, the podcast. If you want to learn more about branding, they get into it way more than we do here. And I love what they do. And they have some great insights specific to podcasting, but also to speakers, content creators in more general sense, not just podcasting, which I love. And the two of them have a great dynamic on, on the mic together. You'll laugh a lot. And you'll hear some great stories from the two of them all around AI and all kinds of great stuff. So head over there to Branded. Check it out. Go like and follow. Give them a rating. Do all the things. You know, you're nice people. You'll do that for them. And then buy Open This Book by Sarah Losey. Make sure you grab a copy of that. And Larry also has a book called Under the Red Hat. Strategies to Stand Out in a Crowded Marketplace. And he has a red hat, which you need to check out. And it's Larry Roberts. So those two together... Two great books, two great people, one amazing podcast, and uh, some resources for you here on the How to Podcast series. Get out there, be the thought leader, be the influencer, go stand outside a busy street, look up at a building and see if you can draw a crowd. It's a fun experiment. It's really fun. And get out there and use your podcast in a way that brings people together, but all together for a good reason. And you leverage the influence you have as a content creator, because you can help people by your words, sharing your thoughts, bringing people together into community. It's what we do here at the How to Podcast series, howtopodcast.ca. And part of that is our meetups. And we would love to have you come join us weekly on Saturdays at this point, as we get together with other podcasters from around the world to talk podcasting, do community together, build each other up, support each other. And our community is growing. We're like at almost 200 people in our meetup group. Not all come at the same time due to conflicts with schedule and all that stuff and topics that we talk about. But we have a topic every week. Uh, you can come in there and sign up for free. It doesn't cost you a penny. And you can come in and meet great podcasters and make connections in real time with real people. So come and join us over there at our meetup via howtopodcast.ca. Thanks for listening. I can't wait to hear more about your podcast. And to know what you put in your coffee, let me know. Thanks for listening. Get out there and influence and be a thought leader with your podcast. Take care. Thanks for listening. Hey, thanks for being here on the How to Podcast series. Glad to have you on the show with us listening in. I hope you're finding value in the podcast. I hope you're finding something that helps you with your show helps you with the tools and the information from these amazing guest co-hosts through our daily daves and these solo episodes. The variety of what we're doing here on the podcast is all designed for you so that you can get the tools you need to create your podcast and keep going with your show. That's why we're here. That's why I'm doing this. And I'm glad you're here finding value in this. If you would like to do a little bit more than just be a listener, if you want to do community with podcasters, we have a thing called our meetup on meetup.com. You can come find us and there'll be a link on our website at howtopodcast.ca and you can come and join in on our meetup. Instead of just being a, a listener, you could actually participate and come in and join other podcasters just like you 
at your stage, at your level, where you're at right now. And then other podcasters who are maybe a little further down the road who can learn from you and you can learn from them. And we host these meetups on a regular basis. Again, go to howtopodcast.ca and you'll find all the information there. We'd love for you to come join us at our next meetup. The only thing we need at our next meetup is you. You're the only thing missing from all of this. So consider joining our meetups. Again, they're totally free on a regular basis, all through howtopodcast.ca. And I'd love to hear more from you about your podcast as well. There's a speak pipe link on howtopodcast.ca. Leave a message. I'd love to hear about you and your show and how we can work together to get your message into the world. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. And thank you for sharing the show with another podcaster that you're like, hey, I think you'd really like this episode. Go ahead, share the episode, and let's get more podcasters on the mic. Thanks for listening.